City seafood lovers, Kian here with Coastal Seafoods, and next to me we have our good friend Lindsay from the very popular YouTube series The Hunger Diaries. Hi, Lindsay. Thanks Hi. for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So, why don't you tell uh, people a little bit about your blog and what you do? So, a few years ago, I started a blog, started with recipes, and now it's sort of evolved into uh, I call them mukbang, where I basically do eating shows on my Instagram and my YouTube channel. And recently, I partnered with Coastal Seafoods and made a ridiculous looking sushi cake made of pre rolled sushi, sushi rice, and large pieces of sashimi with some additives here and there like fish roe. Um, but that video ended up getting around 130,000 views on YouTube, over 200,000 views on Instagram. That's and really so incredible. we wanted to kind of get together today and show you how to make one of these bad boys at home yourself. Of course. Uh, <laughs> you know, sushi is something that we do a lot of at Coastal, obviously. You know, some of you might be familiar with our sushi classes that we do with Chef Nils. Uh, we always have a good time, so we put together some rolls, we cut some sashimi, we've got some tuna, we've got some salmon, we've got some rice ready to go, we've got some more rice cooking so we can actually show you kind of how to season the rice and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that being said, let's get started and let's see how we build this thing. First things first, when you're making sushi cake, you need the rice, right? Yes. So. Cool. So we've got some rice right back here that we just made that we can get all sort of seasoned up. This is just sushi rice that we made in a rice cooker. And what kind of rice should people buy? Is it just sushi rice? Is that what it's Yeah, like? usually you'll find like a, uh, in, the, in the rice aisle or at Coastal if you come down, uh, we sell specific sushi rice, which is a long grain rice, which is what you want. Um, and a lot of the sushi rices that you buy uh, come pre-rinsed. Uh, so you could choose to rinse them again if you want, or you could use them as is. Just depends on the starch kind of level that you're looking for. Gotcha. And so basically, we're going to cook the rice and then add a vinegar. Mirin is really the typical, but we have kind of a special vinegar that we're using today. It's a ginger vinegar. This is nice. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they sell pre-seasoned sushi vinegars in the store um, that you can get. It's very common. Uh, any major grocery store has it. Again, we carry it at Coastal. So any kind of seasoned vinegar that you want to use, um, usually it's a little bit sweet and sour, and you don't need a lot. We're just looking to give the rice just a little bit of kind of uh, seasoning, really. So we've got our rice is fanned out. I just hit it with a little bit of that vinegar, and I'm going to just toss to coat. And if you have like a um, like a wooden spatula that you can kind of just fan the rice with to try to get into every single grain, then that's that's ideal. Obviously, not everybody has the professional sushi setup at home with the big bamboo uh, tub <laughs> and paddle. Um, but you know, oh, any wooden spatula I think would be fine. I'm gonna give this a little taste to make sure we're good. Out there. Nice and warm. Give it just a little bit more. Yeah. You do want to season your rice when it is still warm. Um, that'll help the rice absorb the vinegar a little bit better. And then to work with, obviously you're not going to want to work with it super hot, but again, it's easier to work with warm. So you don't want to like put it in a refrigerator or anything like that. Just let it come to room temperature. Rice will get hard and that is the opposite of what you want. Correct. You'd rather work with it hot. Yeah. Uh, hot. Unless you're looking to make grocery store sushi. Yeah. In which case, <laughs> refrigerate away. Yes. <laughs> okay, so when you're starting a sushi cake, the first thing you want to do is grab whatever plate you're going to have the sushi cake on permanently because you don't want to move it after it's done. So we've got just a nice big dinner plate here and the sushi rice that we just made. Uh, the other essential thing that you're going to need is a cup of water. Uh, dipping your fingers in the cup of water will help prevent the rice from sticking to your fingers, which if you don't have is probably one of the most annoying things yeah. <laughs> on the planet. <laughs> so, Turns out rice is starchy and likes to stick. Yes, exactly. So something small that you can do that will make your life just way easier. So the rice Obviously it's starchy, it's dense, it's basically a glue in itself. 
So it's the perfect base for something like a sushi cake. So all you're gonna wanna do to start off is decide how large you want your finished product to be and make the base. So if you want a three-tier cake and you want the top tier to be about this large, kind of gauge, okay, I might need my bottom layer to be about this big, you know. For us, we're making kind of a, a smaller cake today. And so I'm going to just make this disc a little smaller than the center of this dinner plate. And you also probably want to take into account too that you're going to build out from the from the rice. Yeah. So you'll have another kind of inch or two added on to the base layer. Right, and it's really whatever you want. I think that it's really pretty to do sushi along the outside of the, the first layer so you really see the inside of whatever sushi roll that you chose to make or buy. Um, but there's other options. You could drape sashimi, you could create a like seaweed salad layer at the bottom if you wanted. The world is your oyster. Perfect. <laughs> We can go ahead and add some sushi around the outside of it and then we can start building on top of that. So we've got these great pre-made rolls uh, today that Chef Nils made for us. Uh, if you've taken any of our sushi classes, you will have uh, definitely met Chef Nils. And he's great at this, so he prepared a few rolls for us ahead of time. Sort of different varieties, we've got a tuna roll, a California roll, some with sesame seeds, some with spicy sesame seeds, and some with a little bit of the roe on the outside. Which we've decided is called fish glitter, by the way. Fish glitter. Gets everywhere, sticks to everything. Never goes away. And it's beautiful. And it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's get adding the sushi here, and then we can work on the second layer. We have some lovely pre-rolled sushi that I think will go great as an outer layer on the first layer of the cake. So let's go ahead and add some of that. We've got a few different kinds here. So we've got tuna, looks like we've got a California roll. Uh, these are the inside out rolls, so the rice is kind of on the outside of these. Um, but yeah, you can kind of do it and decorate it however you want. You know, do a lot of different colors, do a lot of different things uh, that will really help the sushi cake sort of pop, I think. Absolutely, and like you can see here, I am using both the California roll and another roll because they're different colors, so I think it just like looks prettier to mix to mix them up. Um, we've also got some unagi sauce, some eel sauce on the side here. It's really sticky, not guaranteed to hold things together for you, but if you're looking for some sort of glue, that is definitely a good option. Okay, so let's just keep adding here. Okay, so we've got our first layer done. I basically just built this sushi rice all the way up a little bit past that first row of sushi because I'm like, what do I want to do with this next? So there's a couple of ideas that I had. One was to just add the sashimi right over the top here. The other was to add another row of the sushi kind of in, the, in between this row. What would you like to do? I think let's do let's do a sashimi roll. Let's do a sashimi yeah. layer. Okay, so we've got our tuna and salmon. And again, I like to kind of alternate things because I think it makes it look really pretty. You want to make sure not to you want to keep your base flat because we're going to be building on top of this. So try the best you can to. Just keep it along the edges so that when we do build on top, it's got something flat to sit on. This is looking great already. Yes. Just like a little blanket. When you're draping, I would definitely say look for the thinner pieces that you have. Obviously, you can control this at home um, because you can cut the fish yourself. Um, if it happens to come pre-cut, again, just look for slices that are a little bit on the thinner side and you should be fine. Now we've got a nice layer of fish going around. Looks really, really pretty. It's going to taste delicious. And so next, what we can do is take more of our sushi rolls 
and we can create our next layer. Now you can use, again, you can use more sushi rice, you can use uh, sushi rice on the outside and fill it with something like seaweed salad or crab mix or um, what was the other thing that you mentioned Your before? Poke would be really poke, good. Poke, anything you want. We're just going to make sure this has a solid base that we can stack a little bit more on top of it. Looking great. Yay. Just gonna shove these two pieces in the center there. It's great for the weird end pieces. Just stick them in the middle where they're hard. Right. Yeah, I gotta do something with those end pieces. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so I'm thinking we add another layer of the sushi on top. We've kind of got our first layer, second layer. Let's build up our third layer a little bit, and then we can decorate it with some sushi flowers. What do you think? That sounds great. Okay, cool. Okay, and we actually have one more sushi roll that has not been cut yet, so we can- Go ahead and cut into this. Yeah, so when he cuts, you'll see, you wanna make as few uh, like sawing motions as you can when yep. you're cutting sushi. Just use a really, really sharp knife. The longer, the better. And just in like a couple of swift motions, back and down, back okay. and down. Okay, so we're gonna build one more layer on top here. And then just use that one for the center. That's great, great idea. Now, if it looks like it's leaning, just push down on it. Like it's kinda, rice. It's rice, yeah. Kind of just compress it in the areas that you need to compress it. Again, we have um, our eel sauce, so if we really need to glue something together, we can. Not saying that it's like as effective as super glue or anything, but you know, it'll it'll definitely help. So we're just gonna crush it all in there. Crushing it in. Crushing it in. Okay. Now, we've got this thing built up. Now I think we should add some fun sashimi flowers on top of it. What do you that think? That sounds excellent. Okay. I think that's a great way to go. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is actually stupid simple. All you have to do, let's make a salmon one first. Start off with one, one piece of salmon and just like roll it into itself. Just like roll it up. Then, you're just going to, where the last piece ended, you're going to start the next piece and just roll it around. And you just keep adding. It turns out super beautiful. It's really, really elegant. And because of the way that the fish is, is cut into the, the size pieces that they are and that they're not like super straight edges, that they're kind of curved, they really do end up looking like petals. And you can fan them out too. They're really malleable, obviously. So once you've got this thing kind of formed, you can just spread those layers out and it makes it look like it's in bloom. Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And again, like look how easy this is. If I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Like, do not need special skills. All right. Okay, yes, so cutesy little flower. So great. Kind of spread it out like that, right on top. The petals kind of come off a little bit, that's fine. It's like regular flower, right? Not every flower is perfect. <laughs> and so then we, what should we do? We can just add a nice little tuna layer around it. That's good. Yeah. As you can see, I'm flying by the seat of my pants here, and you know what? That's okay. This isn't supposed to be complicated. It's supposed to be whatever the heck you want it to it's be. It's a showpiece, that's all. It's a showpiece, yeah. It's gonna look impressive no matter what. And... Your friends will love you if you make this at your next dinner party. Absolutely, and honestly, like, I know like we made our own sushi rice here today, but when I made my sushi cake, I bought sushi rice from a restaurant. Now, that's something that you're gonna want to probably call ahead on because they typically have certain amount 
prepared for their audience that day, however busy they think they're going to be. So I would recommend if they're willing to sell you the sushi rice, that you call the day before and say, hey, how much would it be for me to pick up like, you know, three quarts of sushi rice from you? And it's way, way easier, I, I promise you. Okay, so we've got a few layers here. We've got a beautiful salmon flower in the center, kind of surrounded it by more tuna. And now it's time to add our finishing touches. So we have some fish glitter here, some, some red and orange. This is Tobiko. This is a flying fish row, very commonly seen in sushi. Um, but it adds a nice color. We also do sell a wasabi. Uh, wasabi tobiko. Tobiko, so it's green. So you could add a little green color to it if you wanted to as well. And texturally and flavor-wise, they're very salty and they kind of pop in your mouth. So it's a very interesting texture against the sushi, in my opinion. And it goes really well with obviously the soy sauce. I just love the red. It's beautiful, especially right on top of the salmon like that. Yeah. You could also use salmon roe if you wanted to. Um, again, it's you can kind of do this however you want to do it. This is your sushi cake. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. You can cry if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> and so all I'm doing right now is I'm saying, okay, what does red contrast with? It's probably going to contrast better with the orange. So I'm putting the red row on top of the orange. It just sort of pops a lot more. Absolutely fantastic. And then we've got some orange that we can add to the red. It almost looks like neon. It's so it's so brightly colored and so pretty. It's taking all my willpower to not just dive into this right now. <laughs> and I'm sure you like you're getting an idea now about okay, if you add vegetables, like all that green is gonna look so pretty. Um, obviously the same goes for a seaweed salad. So another thing you could do if you want to really jazz this thing up, you could go to your florist or even just like the grocery store and pick up a couple sprigs of greenery and just like take the leaves off and put it around. Really nice. You could add some real flowers if you wanted. You could probably, if you could find uh, shiso leaf, that would probably work really well too. Mm -hmm. Some of them are very traditionally used to garnish sushi and found in sushi. Yeah, but I mean, you saw how long this took us. If you were just to buy all this stuff and bring it home, like if you went to Coastal and got all of the, the sashimi, you could get stuff to make your own sushi or you go someplace else and get sushi. It took us like 20 minutes to put this thing together, maybe. Better and than any birthday cake you'll ever have. Yes. Isn't it wonderful? This is gonna be super fun to eat. <laughs> um, so what would you usually, you know, obviously you want your sushi accoutrement to go with this, your soy, your wasabi. Yeah, I'm a, a soy wasabi girl. I typically don't eat as much ginger, um, but yeah, just whatever your typical... Actually, pickled ginger would be a really pretty garnish. On yeah, pickled well. ginger would also be very well. pretty. Um, and in terms of soy sauces, you could use your traditional soy sauce. You know, we also got the whiskey barrel shoyu, which I believe you used in your video. I did. This is really it's fun very stuff. Like caramely. We've got a lot of different options uh, at the store, so come on, check it out. We've got all kinds of different sushi stuff. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us today and showing us how to build this of course. beautiful, beautiful beast here. It was my pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. And now it's y'all's turn. You gotta come get some fish and just like get to creating, you know? Take pictures, show it off, tag us in it. We wanna see your sushi cakes. Yes. Tag me in it too. I wanna see your sushi cakes. Of course. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, and uh, we'll get back to you next time. See you guys. Thank See you. you.